Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> and that is the first and last time I bend over. In other words, this is going to be fun. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> All right, guys, so those of you who follow me already, you will know that I love doing time lapses and a lot of commission based time lapse work. Most of my time lapses up until now have been static, so just a camera on a tripod taking continuous photos and then stitching those photos into a video. However, Edel Crone have reached out to me and sent me some of their newer models of their motion control time lapse gear, and I'm super excited to try it out. You might remember in August last year when I was in Turkey doing the Perseids Meteor Shower vlog a friend of mine had a bunch of Edelkron gear there and I tried it out and just fell in love with it so I was so excited when Edelkron reached out to me and they've got, now got version 2 of all of their gear and I'm going to be testing that out in this vlog oh shit alright guys so first up we have the Slide Plus version 2 now this is a slider I'm going to get moving the camera like this and I can unfold the legs that are attached to the device nice and easy and you can use that on the floor and slide the camera like this this is the long version there's also a compact version and you might be thinking that doesn't look very long but this thing has a magic trick up its sleeve and to show you that I need to stick it on a tripod Okay, now that it's on the tripod, I can release this little latch here. Check that out. The whole rail slides with the mount. And you're effectively getting double the length of the slider. It's such a simple, genius little idea. Now, as you can see, this is currently a manual slider, so you have to push the camera. So this is what you'd use for sort of videography to get nice, smooth slides. If you want to do time lapses, you need to attach a motor. <clears throat> and that's where this comes in. This is the slide module version 2. This simply clips on here by two thumb screws. It's powered by two LPE6 batteries. These are the Canon batteries that are used in the 5D Mark IV and 6D. Now you can stick your own ball head here, but Edelkrone have another simple genius idea to replace the ball head. And that is this, the flex tilt head. Look how thin that is. And I'm just going to screw that on top here. Now I need to put my camera on top. Now with my camera mounted, this has all the functionality of a ball head, but more. So I can still pan, I can still tilt like I can with a ball head. However, this allows me to adjust the height of the camera. And I can point it down to the ground and do slides that way. But more importantly, it allows you to pull the camera back and forwards. And what that means is you can get the center of gravity, the center of weight of your camera and lens directly over the center of the slider. And that will give you a much more stable and balanced setup. The other ingenious thing about being able to adjust the height of the camera and having this sliding rail is that you can point the camera forward do a really long slide and because the rail comes back with your camera it stays out of line of the camera so another simple genius idea there's a couple of other devices i want to show you as well so i'm just going to take the flex tilt head off now they've also sent me a head one version two and this is going to give you pan in motion so you can use this on its own or you can use it in tandem with the slider and that's going to give me a slide as well as a pan on top of that you can use two of these together using the flex tilt kit so i'm just going to screw this little bracket on here and then with this little l bracket here i can mount my camera and now i have slide pan and tilt and I can control all of those for a time-lapse. One thing I love about this setup is that for such a complete time-lapse kit, it's incredibly packable. So if you take a look here, so we've got the two head ones nicely there and the slide module there, and then the slider just fits, well, the slider just fits nicely onto the side 
of my backpack. And there's another simple little idea that makes the units more packable. So the screw threads where you mount your bore head or the flex tilt head, they pop into the devices. So you can see there that the screw is currently flush, allowing me to pack it nice and easy. But with a little push and a turn, it pops out ready for you to screw on your ball head or the flex tilt head or whatever you want. And I could just push that back in, slot it into my bag nicely. Taking advantage of this sliding rail mechanism and mounting my camera sideways on one of the head ones to get a barrel roll, I created one of my most insane time lapses yet. Check this out. going to show you how quick and easy it is to set up a motion controlled time lapse using the Edel Crone system. So the basic premise of a time lapse is to take images at an interval. So for astrophotography for example I'd use my normal Milky Way settings f2.8, uh, 20 seconds, ISO 6400 and I would leave a one to two second interval between shots. And then your camera just keeps taking continuous shots and shots and shots. And then you play back those photos at 24 frames a second and then you get a nice smooth video. And what I'm going to do now is load up the Edelkron app. And when I do, it asks for manual pairing or smart pairing. Now, if I choose manual pairing, I can choose which devices I want to connect to. This is super awesome because it means I can use the slider on its own over there somewhere and I can use the two head one units on its own over there somewhere with two cameras and I can control both time lapses with the same app so that's pretty cool but because I'm going to connect to all the devices in this vicinity I'm just going to choose smart pairing and watch this start and it's connected it's so quick and seamless I haven't had any issues with it and that is so important for me at least, I hate it when software and hardware don't connect and they just have connectivity issues. It's literally so easy. As long as your Bluetooth is on, it just connects straight away. Now that I'm in, it's asking whether the the slider is on the ground or on a tripod. The reason for this is, of course, that the, the slider moves when you're on a tripod. So I'm on a tripod, I'm going to choose on tripod. So you're greeted with this screen. Now the two joysticks at the top of the app will control the motion. So you can move the camera to where you want it to be. If you're doing video, you can do a nice motion for your video, but I'm gonna be doing a time-lapse. So what I do is simply move the camera into the start position. I'm gonna choose that as pose one. And I'm gonna do a slide backwards and a pan, maybe a little bit of tilting. And that's going to be the end of my motion, and I just choose that as pose 2. I'm going to go into the time-lapse mode by clicking on the bottom left time-lapse button. And now, uh, if you look towards the bottom, uh, it says that it's going to move from pose 1 to pose 2. And then you can choose the, du the duration of the slide, uh, and then you can also choose the amount of shots that you take during that motion. Or if you don't want to decide the amount of shots that you take to that motion, you can you can choose the interval. So, for example, if I wanted a 22-second interval because I'm taking 20-second exposures, it automatically calculates that I will take 164 photos in the one-hour duration. But I'm going to do a time-lapse for two hours. My shutter speed is going to be 20 seconds, so I set the interval to 22 seconds, and it tells me that it's going to take 327 shots. Uh, in that motion. In the step size tab, you can control the ease in and ease out. So instead of just starting at full speed, it sort of starts gently, then moves uh, sort of constantly, and then towards the end, it sort of slows down nicely uh, and creates a really nice cinematic motion. Now, the other amazing feature that I really like about this app is that if I hit preview now, it will go to pose one, and then it will move slowly to pose two. And if I was to record that as a video, that motion, 
that will be the exact same motion and speed that the time lapse will be when I render the time lapse at 24 frames per second. So you can quickly preview how fast the motion is going to look in your time lapse. That is awesome. That allows you to see if your motion is going to be too fast or too slow. You don't have to do any complicated maths or try and imagine how quick it's going to move. That is a really, really neat feature. So here's an example where I've videoed the motion just before setting up the time lapse and you'll see that the speed of this video is the exact same speed in motion as the time lapse when rendered in 24 frames a second. This is super useful. You get to preview the time lapse before you've even taken it. This is another example here with some Thai nasty plants in Teide National Park panning up to the sky and again you'll see that the speed in motion is the same as the resulting time lapse. Now I'm sure there's creative possibilities here to combine video with time lapse and I've done this before you've seen it in the opening clip to my vlogs where I've combined a video of me setting up my camera with a time lapse of the night sky taken from the same place. So now maybe I'm gonna have to remake my intro scene with the an added bit of motion in there as well so stay tuned maybe a, a future vlog I'll do something like this. I continue to use the devices in Tenerife and also in La Palma but most of my time there was spent running workshops so I couldn't produce as many final pieces as I would have hoped but I'm really impressed with the results it just it makes the landscape look so much more 3D and you get this really smooth cinematic motion and it, it just adds so much to a time lapse shot <laughs> All right, so some final thoughts after two weeks of pretty intensive use now. Um, I mean, first up, the build quality is superb. I mean, the materials used, everything is solid. And the, the two head ones fell out of my bag at one point. I picked my bag up, the back panel wasn't zipped up. The two head ones fell out of my bag and bounced down steep volcanic terrain. And Man, I was terrified, but when I picked them up, it was just a few scratches. They still worked fine and they held up pretty damn well. There's a few scratches, but honestly, I was expecting way more because the the slope of the terrain where I dropped them was very unforgiving, but they survived pretty well. The slider I've basically been keeping on the outside of my bag and even to the point where I put my bag on the floor and the, the slider hits the floor before the bag. I'm not the kind of person who looks after his gear. I'm a, I like to run and gun, make sure I don't miss the shot. And I kind of beat my gear up a little bit, but it's held up super well. A little bit dusty, but I'm sure with a little clean when I get home, everything will be fine. As I mentioned in this video already so many times, there are so many simple, clever, genius little ideas. Everything just works really well together. The app connects so easy. It's so simple and quick to use. There's no gimmicks or you know, just complicated stuff going on. Everything's simple. It's just what you need. But I think anyone can pick this up who has never done time lapse before and easily create some amazing time lapses. I was at first worried about the the way the slider sort of moves um, with the whole camera and mount. And I was worried that it was going to be very heavy on the one side, especially when you've got the slide module and camera on the one side. But all you have to do is make sure that the slide module is over one of the legs that's on the ground and it doesn't topple over. It's been so stable. I've been really surprised. I mean, this Ben Row tripod is hardly, you know, the biggest, most stable tripod. It's a bit of a travel tripod, but it's, it just balances so well. And then of course, when you come over to this side, the, the slide module kind of balances the camera anyway. So it's, it's still pretty stable. The battery life, I mean, I've been doing typically two time lapses a night, like a three hour time lapse and a two hour time lapse. Uh, and then after that, the slider normally goes first and that pretty much runs out of battery. So four to five hours, maybe a little bit more, maybe we could do six. Um, and probably four hours in the cold. Obviously when it gets cold, batteries don't work that well. 
They were supplied with LPE6 batteries from a company called Wasabi, who I've never heard of. Um, and there's a lot of third party LPE6 batteries on the market that are just not anywhere near as good as Canon Originals. And I imagine if you used Canon Original batteries, the battery life would be a lot better. But overall, five to six hours is, is pretty good. It's, it gets me for a night shoot and then I can charge up the next day. The weight of the system, I don't know the exact weight, I'll put it on the screen, but I was quite worried that I wouldn't carry all of it all the time and you know, I'd save some weight by leaving the slider behind or something, but I haven't stopped carrying the entire system <laughs> the whole two weeks. They all work seamlessly together. The app just connects every time. And yeah, there'll be links to all the products in the, the video description below. So go and check out more details. And I will make a tutorial in the near future about how I process my time lapses and edit and stitch them all together. So make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck in clear skies.